Yeah, so I'll start off saying, uh, well, you can look at me and tell them not the, the average person in, in this field. I grew up in Southern Virginia, Danville, Virginia, uh, just outside of Danville, actually, um, in the 60s. And, you know, that was a, a real turbulent time in the, in the country and in some cases around the world. Um, and it was what we call the Deep South. Uh, so opportunities were, were, were low. Uh, I started off in segregated schools. Schools were desegregated when I went to fifth grade and, and life was interesting, similar to what you see on TV. Uh, of course, when you live in it, it's, it's very different from TV. Looking back, I was one of the, the smart kids. Um, someone coined the phrase, uh, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Um, so unfortunately, a, a lot of uh, bright minds that looked like me uh, that did not get opportunity or for one reason or another uh, did not move on. Uh, so I was, I was blessed enough to um, do high school. So I took all the advanced classes, I did well. Um, and, and I did as good as anyone else in the classes. So I went on to college, uh, actually probably would not have gone to college. Again, part of the, the challenge. Uh, I went on a football scholarship. And so that's what kind of set me on my way. I forget exactly how I ended up at NASA, but I've been with NASA uh, over 32 years. I rarely applied for a job, for a new job. Normally someone would say, you think you ought to go do this or go leave that. And then I had a lot of mentors, uh, which I didn't even refer to them that way back then, but people I looked up to and I would go pick their brains. Uh, there were not a lot of people around in my family or otherwise uh, who had the kind of careers that we're talking about here. Right. And so sometimes when you can't see it, it's hard to be it, right? Uh, as I started my career, I, I, I would see people in action. Uh, and I said, geez, I really like the way that person makes decisions. So I like the way that person asks questions. So in some cases, you, you try to emulate a little bit from each person. In other cases, uh, you send an email to catch someone after meetings, say, hey, you've got a minute, I'd like to chat. And you build a relationship. My immediate boss asked me to go to a class. One of the, it was the Goddard, one of the higher Goddard classes at the time. Um, I thought like, I felt like I was beyond that point as well. Geez, I could probably teach the class now. And he didn't like my answer. So he went to his boss and his boss called me over and said, you know, had a little talk with me and told me how important the class was and, and classes like that. Uh, so that kind of set me on my way. And these were classes, um, non-technical. I thought if you worked hard, if you were strong technically, it'd be okay. Uh, he helped me understand that these soft skills were critical. So I think um, if we want to see change, regardless of the change we're talking about, uh, we have to be involved in that. And when we do have opportunity to be in the room, uh, we have to make sure that the conversation facilitates all of that. We, we have to be part of the change that we want to see. And we have different ways of doing it and all of it.